it possible to change people's lives every week? I've, I've spent um, several years now uh, explaining to people in different parts of the world that uh, my intention was always at least partly satirical with this column title, this column will change your life. Uh, but I also think, you know, it depends what you mean by a change, right? A change can be a very small thing. Uh, and um, I, I sort of like the, uh, I, I like the kind of crazy ambition of it, but I'm sure I don't succeed most weeks. That's not really how it's going to work, is it? It's going to be a, it's, it's, you just have to see what happens on a week to week basis. I think the reason I was so interested in writing a, a book about the science of happiness is, you know, firstly, just because I would like to be happier. It's a very personal agenda. Also because it's obviously been a, a very big growing area in, in recent years. And I think that while much of it is very valuable, there have been some strange directions in which it's gone. Uh, and uh, people getting sort of carried away with this idea of relentless positivity and optimism and uh, as you know that's always been the thing that I'm trying to push back against a little bit. I think one of the things that is wrong with the traditional approach to self-help is that it has this very simple model of how the human mind works, right? So you want to be happy, you want to be successful, whatever it is, therefore you just decide and you use your conscious will to uh, bring about those emotions and those outcomes. And the problem with that is the same one uh, as with that um, game where you ask somebody to not think about a, a, a white bear. And it's the same thing, right? If you go through your life trying hard not to feel uh, stress, or anxiety, sadness, then the result will be that you're always thinking about these, these issues. You're trying very stressfully to, to get rid of any, any um, negativity that arises. The attempt to become completely secure, completely safe, uh, completely happy brings about the, the reverse. Um, there was a very famous old uh, English philosopher, Alan Watts, who, who argued that the reason we feel so anxious and insecure today is because we try so hard to feel secure and, uh, and calm. And, and that if we instead could open ourselves to those uh, less pleasant feelings, uh, that they would go away uh, because we wouldn't be so constantly searching for this, this kind of safety that, to, 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 to be inside. So I think there's a lot to be said for that attitude. I don't think they're a completely bad thing. I don't think anybody can, can not have any goal at all. There's an assumption in goal setting that you know now what will make you happiest at some point in the future. And so you're just gonna go to that point. But my experience of life anyway, and I think a lot of people's is, you know, you're constantly surprised by what it is that makes you happiest. You think that a new job is going to be the answer and it disappoints you, but on the other hand, something else happens, as a, something happens in your personal life that, that turns out to be wonderfully fulfilling. So, you know, we're very bad at what they call affective forecasting, you know, um, predicting in advance what's going to make us happy. And I think goals assume that, uh, that we know when we don't know. I think a big part of it is information that we have access to, uh, the, the fact that um, social media, the internet, the, the, the news media acts as kind of like a giant machine for bringing to our attention the most stressful things, the most alarming news. And of course, in evolutionary terms, we are um, uh, designed to be compelled by, by fearful scenes, by by uh, accidents and, and by terrorism and all these things for a good reason many years ago, right? Because it would indicate a threat to ourselves. But now we risk having that reaction to, you know, 200 things a day 
which is just not, not useful and not, and not a sort of uh, functional way of, of being in the world. And I think that is to do with information sharing. It's really easy to see certain problems in other people and in society as a whole that it can be very difficult to see uh, in, your, in yourself because for a whole lot of, for a whole lot of reasons. Um, so I'm inconsistent. Um, a big part of why I write is to tell myself <laughs> what to do, you know. Um, but, uh, but I think, you know, incrementally, I probably get a little bit better at it as the time goes by. Mm -hmm.